Neuroendocrine tumors, known as NEDs, are often hard to diagnose as symptoms vary widely among patients, and many symptoms are often mistaken for other conditions, such as irritable bowel syndrome. Once they're finally discovered, the tumors have often already grown or spread. We'll take a closer look in this behind the mystery story. I was tired all the time, and I was a young mom, and so a lot of doctors just felt that that was normal for you know having young children and all, but I knew there was something more. I really just did not feel well. And so I kept pursuing it, and I went to different doctors, and I was told a lot of different things, including that I was neurotic. And finally, um, I had an exploratory surgery, and they found a tumor in my small intestine. My name is Judy Goltz. I am 57 years old, and I was diagnosed with neuroendocrine cancer 15 years ago. Neuroendocrine tumors are unusual tumors that start in the endocrine cells of our bodies. We have endocrine cells scattered throughout almost every organ in our body, but the most common sites for neuroendocrine tumors to develop are the lungs, the intestine, or in the pancreas. I had a wonderful surgeon who really was diligent in searching. Um, nobody had mentioned cancer prior to me going in for surgery, and uh, they felt very much that they were gonna find something benign. Well, there's one common hormonal symptom uh, that's associated with neuroendocrine tumors. Uh, that's a syndrome called carcinoid syndrome, and one type of neuroendocrine tumor is called a carcinoid tumor. When I woke up in the hospital, I got the good news and the bad news, but the uh, good news is that um, they found it, and at that point, I was relieved because I knew that there would be care, you know, there I would be able to finally feel better. There are a variety of different ways to detect and diagnose it. Those ways include x-rays, CAT scans, procedures like a colonoscopy, blood tests, and even recently some newer sophisticated radiologic techniques that are specific to identifying neuroendocrine tumors. So being diagnosed with neuroendocrine cancer was a little bit of a shock for me because when I did learn about the disease and I educated myself on it, I realized I didn't have any of the typical symptoms. When patients are newly diagnosed, they can come to us through our website. There's a ton of information, everything from um, the basics to videos they can watch to information about upcoming events where they can go to a conference and learn more. We have a slogan in the community, if you don't suspect it, you can't detect it, which means you have to be, as a physician, or even a patient who's being very proactive because they perhaps have a diagnosis for a disease which they're not getting better from. Uh, you have to be proactive, you have to consider carcinoid or another neuroendocrine tumor as a diagnosis when the symptoms may actually be symptoms that are of more common diseases, but those common diseases are not what the individuals have. So a patient with a lung neuroendocrine tumor might have symptoms of cough and wheezing, almost identical to the symptoms that someone with asthma might have. A patient who has a neuroendocrine tumor in the intestine might have intermittent, vague abdominal discomfort, identical to the symptoms that someone with irritable bowel syndrome might have. So these are some of the challenges that make the tumor so difficult to diagnose, especially at an early stage. So about nine years after I was diagnosed, I became more symptomatic, and I had another reoccurrence of a GI bleed. And I started to develop some abdominal pain. I would have intermittent di diarrhea. I would have something called, they called flushing. And flushing is when you uh, become very um, hot and red, but it's not like hot flashing. Hot flashing is when you're wet and you sweat, and hot and flushing is when you just become very hot and very red. And I was having those symptoms. And um, I started on medication. Some of those treatments are medications that have very few side effects, uh, which can help suppress the hormone secretion and make patients feel a lot better. Uh, there are additional medications that can help slow down the growth of the tumor. I think the most important message is to always listen to your body and to pursue 
any kind of investigation or medical care that you can to get the answers. If you're not comfortable with yourself and you really know that something is wrong, you're really feeling uncomfortable, you need to pursue it. With improved awareness, people will be able to identify the tumors earlier when they can be cured with surgery or at least at a point when effective treatments can be started at an earlier time. You need to really, really listen to that inner voice. And I do believe that we all know when something is wrong. Sometimes we choose to ignore it, but I think that when you're uncomfortable enough, you need to pursue it. 20 years ago, uh, neuroendocrine tumors were in many ways a forgotten disease. There were very, very few effective treatments that have been identified for patients who have neuroendocrine tumors. We've seen a real shift just in the past five or 10 years. There's been a renewed interest in neuroendocrine tumors and renewed success in identifying successful treatments for these patients. I have good days and I have bad days, but uh, most of the time I feel pretty good. I think this is just something that you live with and you uh, listen to your body. And when I'm tired and I don't feel good, I take those days. And when I feel good, I try to make the most of life. I think the future is very bright for neuroendocrine tumors and for patients living with the disease and those to be diagnosed as well. We're seeing huge advances in treatment options and imaging, and I think there's a lot to be hopeful for. You know, you still get to live your life and you still get to enjoy lots of other things. And just to appreciate that this is just the piece of luggage that you were given to carry on your journey. But everybody gets luggage. Sometimes luggage is heavier, sometimes it's lighter, but it's just part of our journey. And for more information on diagnosing and treating neuroendocrine tumors, visit carcinoid.org or our website, thebalancingact.com.